Uh, let's go. Let's, let's, let's have some fun, boys. Let's go NFL. New Orleans at Dallas Cowboys. Cowboys are favored by six and a half. Over under currently, according to FanDuel, shout out, is 46 and a half. Let's go. I'll go first. Cowboys yeah. win, Cowboys cover. Sorry, sorry. Should I say it again? <laughs> yeah. Cowboys win. Okay. Cowboys win, Cowboys cover. Sorry, Connor. Cowboys lose, Saints cover. Oh, well, obviously. <laughs> Cowboys suck. Their quarterback is horrible. Uh, I'll take the Cowboys at home only because they're at home. If the if it was the Saints at home, I would pick them. I That's the only reason. Jerry's world is a little bit different to play in. I agree the quarterback plays terrible, but for both teams. I have not been this excited with the New Orleans Saints in a very long time. I mean, you take away Pete Carmichael, you bring in Clint Kubiak, and now we know where a lot of Brock Purdy's success was coming from. Clint Kubiak was the man in San Fran. I mean, oh my gosh, Nate. Oh my gosh. Hold up. Before I get ahead of myself, here's a ticker with all the scores from week three. Nate, Derek Carr is looking like him and Sam Darnold are both looking like two MVP candidates right now. I know well, it's only been two weeks. I'm not trying to get ahead of myself. I say, let's not get but, too excited. It's only but we only going into week three. Um, you know, get excited at the end of October. That's when you get excited and whatnot. Um, you know, end of October, you know, when things start to shape out when we win in some important games, um, division games and, and, and so forth. That's when you get excited. Um you don't want to get excited prematurely and just again hopes turn and go 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 sideways. You know, stay even keel. You know, again, Sam Darnold, and I think I said this before, you know, it's a beautiful thing with Sam Darnold being a top five draft pick and you know, his you know, in New York and not having the the career he's want wanted to have and so forth, and have an opportunity to rewrite, you know. The, the story on him and not what the, what the naysayers say, calling him a draft bust and this is that and the other. Because I'm going to be honest with you, the New York Jets is like, that's like career suicide for a, a, a quarterback to go be drafted there. You know, if you look at every quarterback that's been drafted in New York for the Jets, they have not fared well. And they're not on the team. Let's look at the Mark Sanchez, you know, um, uh, uh, Sam Darnold, Geno Smith, Zach now, Zach Wilson. Uh, Zach Wilson, you know, they have not. And the thing about it is the Jets organization, you know, that that is like, you know, I guess you could say their their kryptonite is driving the quarterback. But also they don't have a coach that's there that can actually develop talent. You know, you put a solid coach there that can develop a quarterback and like really take your time and be patient with the process. That's the thing, you know, um, but, again, it's a beautiful thing to see Sam Darnold. He's out there playing very, very well. Derek Carr is playing well early parts of the season. Uh, Clint Kubiak, uh, again, what he's utilizing is the running game and whatnot. Um, Derek Carr, I mean, if, we go, if we're going to talk about the Cowboy game or, excuse me, talk about Derek Carr, it, it helps when you can run the ball. And it, it opens the door and opens the, the, the playbook for those big plays. I'm going to give you some stats, and I'm glad you said that because running the ball was such an issue last year, especially with Kamara out. I mean, they couldn't do it, and he just feels more comfortable in the offense. I mean, Clint Kubiak's main main goal before he went to New Orleans was, I want to make this a running culture. I want this offense to have – I want people to be scared of not just passing the ball – but more so running the ball because now my quarterback is able to be more comfortable in the pocket. He's able to do play action passes and throw it 70 yard down the field to Rashid Shaheed. Let me tell you what happened. I'm going to go full screen to tell you, Nate. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go full good. screen. I'm going to go full screen. Look, this is exactly what happened week two against the Dallas Cowboys. The Saints ended up winning 
44 to 19. This gives Dallas the most points. They scored 35 in the first half. It was the most, most points, points in, in, against in Dallas, Dallas since 2004. Right. 2004. Now this ruins Dallas's 16 straight home game win streak. The last time they lost at home, guess who beat them? Tom Brady, Week One, 2022, against the Buccaneers. The Saints now are the second most in points in the span of the first two games of the season. They just hit 91 points. They scored 47 last week, 44 this week. They're the second most. Now, you want to know who's number one in that? Ooh. Who's the who's the team that has scored the most points in the first two weeks of the football season? The 2009 New Orleans Saints when they went and beat Indianapolis in the Super Bowl. Now, number three, which is tied for the Saints, 91 points, is the Dallas Cowboys, 1971. Guess what happened that year, Nate? Guess what happened that year? They won the lockout year, was it? They won the Super Bowl. Oh, wow. So you look at these teams who are bringing in the most points in the first two games they've ended the season with the Super Bowl. I don't want to get ahead of myself. I don't want to say this is going to be the Saints. But – this is better than I have expected. I'm really liking the script this year, Nate. I'm really liking it because it's it's looking so good for the New Orleans Saints. I mean, oh my gosh, I was I thought I was crying tears of joy last week. It was a, a mountain of emotions this week. When I see a 60 yard screen pass to Alvin Kamara, I'm getting giddy. I'm getting up out my bed. I'm going crazy. I hadn't seen that since 2021. I mean. It's been a, it's been several years since I've seen Alvin Kamara run like that. He's running it like his rookie season when he won Offensive Rookie of the Year. Well, you want to know something? Uh, one of the things that that's very very helpful and prevalent in that in, in that aspect is the fact that Alvin Kamara and Clint, or Clint Kubiak is, he's, he's, he knows how to use Alvin Kamara and his talents and his skill set. Alvin Kamara is not just a running back. He is a football player. You get the ball to him in any way, shape, form, whether it's running the ball in between the tackles, toss sweeps, screens, um, and the form of receiving, spreading him out against those um, those linebackers or those strong safeties. You have to get him the ball and get him the ball in space. So that's what Alvin Kamara, when he came into the league, that's what he did. That's what he was known for. He was known for not just being a one-trick pony as far as running in between tackles, but being a guy that you have to really uh, game plan around offensively and defensively because of the things that he brings to an offense. You know, he's a guy that, you know, he may not he may not rush for 100 yards a game, but he'll get you about 200 all-purpose yards, and that's positivity right there, all-purpose yards, whether it's 70 yards rushing, another 90 receiving, and another 50 or 40 in the return game. It, th this is positivity in, in what he adds to the foundation of your team and, and, and your offense overall. So I I really do love what Clint Kubiak is doing in, in the usage of Alvin Kamara. So, I mean, that's, that's kudos to him. Now, going into last season, there was a, uh, a list in my mind that I had that I wanted to get rid of in New Orleans. And everyone was saying, look, D.A., he's this, this, and this. He, he's not as good of a head coach. When the coach rankings came out in the beginning of the season, guess who was sitting at 32? Dennis Allen, yeah, which is the New Orleans Saints head coach. He was sitting at number 32. Does Dennis Allen look like the number 32nd ranked head coach in the league now? Heck no. He's turned that around because, look, this is the list I had last season. Pete Carmichael, which was the old OC, had to go. Mickey Loomis had to go, and then maybe Dennis Allen. Dennis Allen was not my top. Pete Carmichael is gone. Look how wide that Saints offense has been able to become. I mean, oh, my gosh. When you are able to have a 35, 34-year-old uh, Derek Carr in the backfield, you're not thinking, hey, I'm going to come in here and teach an old dog new tricks. But that's exactly what Kubiak did. He came in there and brought – a passing game, a comfortable passing game to New Orleans with the 
concentration of the run. He was not going to be able to make Derek Carr comfortable if he was not going to establish a proper running offense in New Orleans, and that's exactly what he did. When you sign Jamal Williams to a three-year, $33 million deal back in 2022, and he only gets one rushing touchdown last season, you're scratching your head like, okay, well, this dude just led the league in rushing touchdowns. What's happening? It's the offensive scheme. Jamal Jamal Williams already has double or triple the amount of rushing touchdowns in the first two games he did last season. And it's because now Kubiak has established something that was not established prior. Pete Carmichael was assuming Drew Brees was in the, behind the line of scrimmage and was able to throw 40 times a game. You know how many times Derek Carr has thrown in the past two games? 38 times. He is 31 for 38 with 443 yards, five touchdowns, which is number one in the league. And now he's number one in passer rating and QBR. Derek Carr is putting on a show in New Orleans. I don't want to get ahead of myself, say he's MVP, whatever, whatever. If he continues to play like this, go ahead and put him down. Write him down in the books for the MVP award because he's going to show up. He's going to show up if he keeps continuing to play like this. His percentage is there. His passer rating is there. His QBR is there. His touchdown is there. He threw a pick last game I wasn't impressed with. But it's all there for Derek Carr. I like it. I mean, it's just, again, not getting ahead of yourself, staying within the, the confines and the concepts of each game plan because each game plan each week uh, changes. Uh, not trying to do too much. Don't Never want to put your, um, your team into – uh, harm's way by careless turnovers and careless play. As long as he does that, I mean, we know what Derek, Derek Carr can do. Um, we've seen it when he was uh, in, in Oakland slash Las Vegas. Uh, he just needs the right opportunity and for coaches to, to, again, put the team and the players in the right opportunity or excuse me, in the right, right positions for them to flourish and succeed. Um, again, but if you can get this running game going, and again, I think if I'm not mistaken, Alvin Kamara averaged five yards a pop. And I don't know whoever's uh, mm. fantasy team he was on. He ate on Sunday. And it was oh, just. Yeah. A- he had over, he had like 43 points in my fantasy league. And my guys in the comments right now, he whooped who he played against. Because you can get 43 points to a running back. It don't matter who else gets points as long as they pr- get in their projected points. But oh my gosh, Nate, the the amount of joy and, and and excitement I had watching this game. Excuse me, it was forty six. The amount of joy and excitement I had watching this game, seeing how comfortable Derek Carr was, not just in the pocket. I mean, we were going in with saying, "Look, our O line." might be just a little bit better than it was last year. And they were top 10 in QB pressures. Like, they were a, not a very good O-line. But then you bring in Talius Fuaga, which at the point I was not super happy with. You wasn't happy about? I wasn't super happy with it because I felt that we had the chance to get the best defensive player in the draft, and we passed on a tackle, which now I see hindsight is twenty twenty. The Saints organization, I will give props to Mickey Loomis for this one, he made a good call because that was a dire need in position was tackle. I can see how good the defense is playing. That red zone defense, Dallas scored one touchdown, and it wasn't in the red zone. They scored 19 – they scored four field goals. Four field goals, Nate. Half of them were in the red zone. Yeah. So when you have a red zone defense holding you to two field goals, that's good ball. That's good ball right there. They held him to four field goals and a touchdown. You can't ask any more from your defense, especially when Derek Carr's out there already going on the offense and three plays he's got a touchdown. I mean, you're expected to play your defense a a big percentage of that game. And when your defense performs the way it did with your offense scoring so quickly, you got to give kudos to your defense. That team just all around looked like they were eaten. They wanted it. They looked like a team. It looked great. I can't I, – I, listen, I'm not going to disagree with you. This was the best game we've seen uh, New Orleans play in a long time. And the last time we've seen a game of this of this magnitude of dominance, uh, to be honest with you, number nine was under the center. He was a quarterback. 
and now it's number four. But I'm not calling him Drew Brees or anything. If we go into the beginning of this season, the Saints were projected third in the NFC South. We were saying the NFC South is the worst division in football. This is going to be the worst division in football. Carolina is going to be the worst team in the NFL. Saints going to have seven wins. Buccaneers might have eight. Falcons might have nine. We're going in this. There ain't a team in the division that's going to have ten wins this season. There ain't a team. But, look, you go in. Baker's playing good, which is scary. The Buccaneers playing good. But you know who's not? The Falcons. And I was I was scared going into the season with the Falcons. I thought their, their offseason acquisitions were going to bring them to the top. Kirk Cousins came in. They got Darnell Moody with their wide receiver depth. Their secondary looks great. And then they performed the way they did. Well, they and came, now I'm thinking – they came through last night. They, they did. Yeah. Kirk had a nice little uh, end of the game, little two-minute drill offense. He came in, won the game at the end. It, look, it looked good. It looked good. But I'm not scared of them. I'm more scared of the Buccaneers now. Because Saints and Buccaneers are the – there's only four teams in the NFC that are undefeated. Saints, Buccaneers, Vikings. No, that might be – there might only be three. I think that might only be three. I'd have to look at it. I think that I'll based on what I'm thinking. If anybody can fact check me, I think there's only three. Maybe the Packers. Maybe no, the Packers. They lost, they lost the first. Did they lose? Never mind. I think there's only three. Any if anybody can fact check me on that. And look at this. Look at this. I'm so glad Noah Brock is in this in this chat during this segment. Eric McCoy and Lucas Patrick, who was a veteran acquisition the Saints had, who wasn't supposed to be, like, super good. They just got him for a little cheap, cheap, because Andrews Pete left. The two highest graded O linemen in the entire league over two weeks. Seattle's another 2-0. Oh. Thank you, Noah. I need to get back check me. But, oh, my gosh. When I look at this team, I'm thinking, O-line's going to be bad. Our defense is going to be good. Our offense is going to be mediocre. You bring in, and we had a segment about Clint Kubiak. We had a segment. Do you remember that, Nate? Mm -hmm. We talked about Clint Kubiak and how his passing game coordinator experience in uh, San Fran was going to impact this forty, uh, this New Orleans team. Now, if we go back, Clint Kubiak was the OC for the Vikings, I think. Let me fact check that before I, before I say that. But I'm almost certain it was the Vikings. Um. Yes, it was the offense coordinator for the Vikings in 2021. I thought so. He was the offense coordinator for the Vikings. He had offense coordinator experience. Didn't work out. He went to Denver, went to San Fran, became the passing games coordinator. Now he's in New Orleans trying to res resurge his offensive coordinator status. Well, when you have a dad like Clint Kubiak, it's kind of hard to – to be like, okay, are you going to be as good as your dad? Are you are you going to? It's, it's difficult because people are constantly comparing you to your father. Think about Marvin Harrison Jr. The way he played, he had a hundred yards, two touchdowns in the first half. Only rookie to ever do that is his dad. So he's constantly being compared to his dad. But you want to know something else? I mean, because we can say the same thing. Uh, constant comparison uh, of Kyle Shanahan to Mike Shanahan. Mike Shanahan has been completely. Uh, amazing. He was amazing uh, football coach and whatnot. And you see what he did with that with that zone running scheme and how, again, they've taken that to everywhere they've been. You know, every place that whether the Shanahan name has been has taken that, that zone running scheme and has perfected it with each team. You know, you look at it over there with, um, oh, excuse me, with San Fran and what, what, what Kyle is doing and, and how it's growing even more. Uh, when we talk about players or people that will – Get the constant comparisons of their of their parents or their father or their siblings, and whatnot. Um, you know, it, it comes with the territory, but you know, again, you got to appreciate that, and, and it has to be one of those aspects of them in the back of your in the back of your mind that okay, you want to compare me to to my father or my my brother or whoever, but I'm itching and, and pushing myself to be better than what they were or are. And that's perfect for Kyle Shanahan because his dad won a couple Super Bowls at Denver, didn't he? Yes, he did. So, and 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 he, he, Kyle has yet to do so in in San Fran. He's made it to, to a couple, but the Chiefs have always st stood in their way. But I'm going to tell you this, Nate. Week 5, 2024, the New Orleans Saints go to Arrowhead Stadium to play the Kansas City Chiefs. 
How do you think that game's going to go, Nate? How do we see it? This, the Chiefs are looking for a three-peat. Is this a preview of what we could see in the Super Bowl in you know, New Orleans? You know, a lot of people, you know, talk about uh, possible possibilities and, you know, previews of the, the Super Bowl and whatnot. Um, could it be? Yes. You know, you never want to get beside yourself and get ahead of the, the schedule because, again, we're still in week three. Um, because, again, let's face it, there's been times where, you know, teams, we, you have tabbed teams to, to make it to the Super Bowl that, that haven't. Um, so let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's, again, let's not put the carriage before the horse. Again, let's make sure we just, again, one week at a time. We haven't even gotten to a, an important division game and, and, and the shaping of the divisions and the conferences have not happened. So, again, everybody's still getting their feet wet. Um, again, it's still, you know, the, the learning part of the season, the early part of the season where, you know, you're still learning some things on all aspects and on all teams. Excuse me, but let's not get beside ourselves. Could it be? It could be. Could damn well, but it also can be two teams that we have not, you know, uh, seen or, or, or viewed as potential Super Bowl, Super Bowl matchup. You know, I mean, you never know. You might mess around and see the the Baltimore Ravens and the Dallas Cowboys in the Super Bowl. So let's not get beside ourselves. I can't. Ugh, that's Jack, and I believe I said that. Yeah, yeah, maybe not put the Dallas Cowboys in Super Bowl at the last performance. But I, I know what you're saying, Nate. I'm not going to try to get ahead of myself, but. The, the excitement I'm feeling towards this team from being low ball at the beginning of the season is when they have – my expectations were down here, and when they have exceeded that expectation all the way up here, there's just a sense of pride and, and enjoyment that I get from watching this team grow from last year. I mean, you were a team last year that people were saying – you're not going to get back to playoff contention. You're not going to get back to the promised land. There is not a single there's not a single way in in the next coming years that with your front office, with your coaches, with your coordinators, with everybody in your staff, your team, there is no way that the New Orleans Saints will become a contender again. And to see that, to see that narrative just be squashed in the first 2 weeks of this NFL season. It's really good to see. Well, let's okay again. Two weeks into the season, two weeks in. Let's not let's not get too too overly excited because again, two and zero right now. But let's see the the true identity of a team when you find out about a team is not when they're doing good and everything you know is it peaches and oranges and apples and, and, and rainbows and sugar clouds, all that. No, adversity is the best thing where you can to measure the strength and the, the, the wherewithal and the perseverance of a team. So everything's going well. It's, it, it's when adversity strikes and how good can this team weather a storm? You know, right now, yeah, they're 2-0. and oh. You know, have they hit that rough patch? You know, again, no, they haven't. And if you look at every team that has, you know, won the Super Bowl, won the Super Bowl within the last years, they've all had a rough patch where they had to weather a storm, where they had to figure some things out. You know, and that's the beautiful thing about it. So let's not, like, again, let's not jump from A to Z. We got to get to B and then go from B to C. Let's 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 take our, our time, or excuse me, take our time and join this process and, again, getting better and better and finding out our, our identity. We can, we got.